So what we're looking at today is a move function. Okay, so a couple of different reasons why we would use a move function. One set up here. If we have a timer and we want to record the time at which something happens, we could, we could do that with a move function. So we have this timer that's running, and what the move function is going to do is it's going to take anything from the input and put it into the output. So whenever I push this green button, it's going to save that time value that that button was pushed, 14 seconds and 563 milliseconds. Okay, and so if I push it again, it's going to save that value. Okay, it's going to keep saving that value every time I push that button. Okay, so it's taking whatever is timer input right here and putting it into the output uh, here. So if there's a reason we want to save a value or, or move a value uh, from an input to an output, that's why we would use the move function. We also see this used a lot for sequencing applications. If we want to have one thing happen uh, before the next and then the next. So what we'll do is we'll set up a quick uh, little sequence uh, where we will have a tank right here. The pump will turn on. The pump will pump material into the tank. That'll be step one. Then the mixer will turn on right here. That'll be step two. And then the valve will open and it'll drain material out. That'll be step three. Okay, so we can do that with the move function. We can have three different steps. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start this off by using the green push button to start everything. Okay, so the green button, that's going to go is that's going to go in and do a move. Okay, so move functions have their own folder. So we see that here. We're going to make this a move block. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to start our sequence. So we're going to give the input value of 1. And the output okay, is going to be something that we're going to create. And we're just going to call it step. And that's going to be able to save where we're at. Okay, we want that to be in our memory. And we want that to be a word. We'll be fine. So when we push the button, what's going to happen is this variable step is going to get the value of 1. And then what we want to do is we want to say, all right, what do we want to happen when we're in step 1? And so what we can do with that is we can use our compare, and we can use an equal to compare. Okay? And so when step is equal to 1, oops, when step is equal to 1, this is what we want to have happen. In our case, we're just going to say we want the red light to turn on. That would be the case of the pump running. Okay. <clears throat> and so, um, once we do that, then what we can do is we can also call out a timer if we wanted to. Okay. Timer on delay. Okay, and this will be our pump timer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say their pump runs for 10 seconds. And then what happens is after the pump, so this is going to come on, and after the pump runs for 10 seconds, then we want to move into step two. Take the number two and put it into step. And then while we are equal to step two, our next output is going to come on. Which in our case is going to be the green line. And then also, we're going to have a timer and a move function. This will be our mixer timer. 
And again, we'll just do 10 seconds. And this will be our move. And we're going to move into the step three. going to when step is equal to three that is going to turn on valve, which would be the yellow light We're not going to put a timer on this one. We're going to put a button on this one. So we'll put the red button on this one. And that'll go back to that. And then we'll download this to the PLC. Okay, so our download was successful. So now we want to watch what happens. Once I push this green button, you see a value of 1 go into the uh, variable step, which means that step will equal 1 here, which means the red light should turn on right away. Okay, it does. The red light's on. And we're also timing for 10 seconds. So while that red light's on, we're going to time for 10 seconds. And then it's going to move step two. It does. The second it goes into step two, that means two uh, is equal to the value step. Green light comes on. And that's going to stay on for 10 seconds. And then we're going to move to step three, which we just did, causing our yellow light to come on. We're going to stay there until we push the stop button. Okay. Now we have the stop button tied to step four but there's no logic with any of our lights on step four, so they're all off, okay? So the yellow light's not on because we have the value of four for the variable step. It's not equal to three, so that's false. Three is not equal to two, so that's false. The green light's not on, and one, and four is not equal to one, so the red light is off as well, okay? And it will start all over again when we push the green button because that will push the variable one, the, that'll push, the number one into the variable step. Okay, and then it goes through in 10 seconds, the green light after the red light and then the yellow light will come on. And that's another example of why we would use the move function.